Well, hello and welcome to another offsite construction series by offsitedirt.com, our construction news platform for everything offsite, whether it be technology, events, volumetric, panelization, containers, all of the above. That's what we like to discuss on this channel every month, the last Tuesday of the month. Today, we are certainly excited to have Layer, which is a company, a technology company. Um, Jeff Ells and I met about a year ago and certainly just discovering amazing new opportunities in the offsite solutions. And this is where Layer kind of comes in. Today, we're going to be talking about driving results through technology in the modular world. Um, Scott, how are you this morning? I'm good, Audrey. Um, glad to be here and glad to learn more about Layer. As we were just talking about before this, we had a um, different member of uh, Layer, Zach, on the ASC podcast about a year ago. So um, learn about their software back then, but it seems like in the past year they've come a long way and they have a bunch of new um, features and I'm excited to hear about all that today. I am as well. Thank you, Scott. Well, welcome, Jeff Ells. We love that you're here. We'd love to hear a little bit more about your company, your background, and um, teach us. We're here yeah. to learn. Oh, what a, what a great lead in. Thank you. Well, number one, thank you very much for having me. This is a great way to uh, spend the day. I love learning about new things. I love talking with new people, sharing the experiences. And I think uh, Audrey had brought up a really good point where we're really trying to create a community within the modular world. The people who are on this call already know that this is where the industry is going and the people not on this call are going to be left behind. So it's important for all of us to come together as a community for the betterment, sharing ideas, sharing experiences, sharing what works or what doesn't work so we can move this forward and take from a very small percentage of the industry to a very large percent of the industry. Now, one of the things that I've been talking about and researching, there's not a lot of really good tools for you all. And so the way I actually started, if it's okay, I'm going to share my screen here. I would love that. Thank you. Yes, and I agree yes. with you 100%. And I, I love that we are both on this mission to open the conversation and to start driving new opportunities for people to certainly understand a little bit more about this, this movement that's happening underground. And now it's finally raising above the dirt and people are starting to discover how offsite is, is happening right now. So thank you for that, Jeff. Yeah, no, it is. And I say it's just it's a very exciting time. And it's one of those things that uh, I've been in the, uh, uh, the entrepreneur world for probably the last 20 years. I've only been in the AEC world for the last three. So I've uh, my kind of my niche is uh, starting companies, helping get sold off and then come uh, help another company get that sold off. But I had the opportunity to join Layer about uh, two and a half years ago. And Zach, my partner, is actually a registered architect. And so about two years ago, they were awarded a large project for the Nebraska State Capitol. We were here in gorgeous Lincoln, Nebraska. And so basically what it entailed was a, it was a historic preservation project, but it was a huge facility audit. And they had to document, I believe it was 1,300 rooms, 1,100 windows, 57 data points per room. And they were doing it with the old camera and a clipboard. So very quickly, Zach being the little unicorn that he is, said, listen, there's got to be a better way to get this done. We have all this great building data, but it's all over the place. We need it centralized to one central source of truth and then connected to the tools we use to design. Because the data is a wonderful thing if we can use it, if we know where to find it, and if I can get to it when I need it. And I think we had talked a little bit earlier as well, the transition I see in the modular world right now is much akin to Revit. Back in the day, people were like, oh, I'm not going to use Revit. I'm sticking with my AutoCAD. I'm not going to do this. Well, guess what? About 93% of the marketplace right now is Revit. And so I see the same movement within the modular. We need to start getting this down, but we need to start solidifying uh, those processes to make this more effective and to make this more profitable at the end. So the way I actually like to start is I spoke with, oops, let me get, uh, oops. Uh, I spoke with a friend of mine. He's actually the facility manager for uh, Sarpy County here in Nebraska. And so they are, what you're looking at right now is a large scale uh, jail that's all doing modular. So it's in Sarpy County. It's going to be, I think, 200 cells, office space, everything else. And they're going all modular. So I said, Brian, why modular? Give me, give me the thought process of why did you do this? Number one, it saved him $14 million off that project cost. 
I don't know who you are, but $14 million is a lot of money. I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a billionaire. It's still a lot of cash. So that obviously took a lot of, uh, uh, not a lot of convincing to make sure, okay, if we do something like this, we can save you a chunk of change off the top. He said, the other thing is one of the main things that he saw value in was actually going down to the factory. He said, once he walked into that factory and saw the process, kind of like the old Bugs Bunny cartoon, da -da 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 he saw how efficient this could become. And he saw the very process, how we could start saving time and money. So the other thing Brian said, it's all about time, uh, waste, and then uh, and uh, money. And so 66% or 66 of the building professional sped up their process. We can spit out all kinds of good facts for you why this makes sense. But what it comes down to is time, money, and waste. And knowing that construction waste is one of the biggest factors in our ecology right now, I think we as a community really need to take a hard look at this about what we could do to push the industry forward as far as some green aspects and really trying to reduce that cost and reduce the amount of, uh, of stuff we produce and then waste. Yeah, and I have to, on that note, I do Please. have to agree with you there, um, Jeff, because you know the other thing that we're all facing, traditional or on the offset, um, type of construction are building materials and building material increases. And if we can use less of those, you know, increases of those materials, obviously it helps not only our planet, but it also helps the bottom line. And yes, $14 million for anybody, that's a huge chunk of change. It's true. It's true. And I said, <laughs> and it's, it's one of those things that when you really take a step back, it just makes sense. If you're looking at the pure process design and dollars behind it, that's why this is so important because this is the way buildings need to get done. So again, there's all kinds of great stats why this is important, but there's always a flip side too. Okay, what are the issues? Well, we have so much, there's a lot of issue in traditional construction. What happens is now it's magnified under the, under the lens of the modular construction. So there's a variety of different things we face. One of the biggest ones that he addressed is that our design has to be rock solid from the get-go before we start production or anything else. So a lot of these design decisions and processes are forced all the way up to the front to make sure all this data, all this information is collected to make sure we have that solid base moving forward into construction, production, and then operations as well. He said the other thing, again, back to my capital example, we have all this great data, but it lives all over the place in an Excel spreadsheet, in an InDesign, in emails over here. So he said it was just the, the, the manual process trying to get everything and trying to have collaboration between the key stakeholders. You've got ownership, you've got a GC, you've got a contractor, and everyone's spread all over the place from the factory to the actual on-site. So the real-time collaboration is absolutely vital for the success of any kind of project like this, whether it be traditional build or a, or a module. The other thing is you obviously have project delays. So it's one of those things, the scope changes or the design changes. Again, since those problems are then magnifying into the, into the modular world, we really have to find a good way to address this. Back to our Revit conversation, we have this very powerful tool within Revit. A lot of times we're not harnessing the power of Revit or of our BIM model. We've got all this great information. We've taken time, we've done the modeling. Then what happens? It sits there. We need to find a way to fully integrate this BIM integration into your day-to-day -to, -day to make it more effective, reduce the cost, reduce the double entry and the manual entry. Razor thin margins, we're all familiar with this, right? We're all about speed, we're all about scale. We have these margins and now all of a sudden the timing becomes that much more important because I don't have a place to put this delivery uh, until this thing gets done. So the, the timing in a very linear fashion, it lends itself to that razor thin margin. So again, we have to set up that solid base to maximize that dollar, uh, maximize that uh, bottom line. And then reaching scale, we work with a lot of ADU companies out there that they're kicking butt taking names that they have wait list until July, but at the same time, their processes still aren't, uh, still aren't set enough where they can actually get this thing to scale. And so we have to take a step back, really get a granular look of those processes we're doing, and is it saying, how do we automate it? What technology is available to eliminate that double entry or that manual entry and have everything in one central source of truth? 
So how are we managing that right now? I don't care if you're modular or, or uh, traditional, we all live and die in Excel or email or these outdated file folders that I have to dig through to get stuff. Or my favorite, the binder of death. We get done with the project and what happens? We get a binder about yay big with every cut sheet, everything that we've collected, give it to ownership and say, okay, good luck. Well, the problem is I had, as an owner, I have to dig through all this stuff as soon as the alarm uh, uh, goes bad or as soon as my oven goes bad. I'm now digging through all this stuff as opposed to having a digital playbook handed over at the end with all the information at my fingertips. So we wanna get rid of this stuff and again, centralize every one location. And the thing that blows my mind, there's really not a lot of technology that is absolutely tailored to your specific needs. And there's a couple examples out there. There's offsite.com. I'm not sure if anyone else is using that, a really solid platform. You've got ones like Procore. You've got some Autodesk features that are now coming up. But the problem is the tools that people are using aren't customizable to exactly what your problem is that you're trying to solve. And they take a lot of the traditional uh, construction and try to to lend it to the modular and we all know a lot of those processes just don't match up or we need something more tailored to us. And I was going to ask is there any other technology that people are using right now in their day-to-day -day that uh, they'd like to talk about or kind of bring up? You know I have to say that you you've touched on so many different points and we were kind of having this dialogue before where there aren't a lot of platforms and even like the pro car for um, platform, it's not really set up for modular, right? They're they're trying to transition that. You've got builder trend, builder trend. Um, you've got co-construct. You've got you know a couple of like build build topia. I think that might be one as well. But none of them really pertain to this off offsite inclusion. And I do love you're bringing up such a valid point about the binder. You know, I used to be in traditional building and then I moved into modular construction a little, little less than five years ago. And it's so true. I have these binders of, of information and it would be so much easier if it was all just sitting on the cloud and I could ship that over. So I, I love that. that. That right there is hands down awesome. Yeah, and, and to have that empirical knowledge, right? Because it's one of those things, if we put anything into a binder of death, that means it's out of sight, out of mind. So if I have a similar project comes along, then I have to go find the specific binder that I'm using, find the information, and all good ideas come from a problem, right? So about a month ago, my wife and I were sitting, we just bought a new home, something happened, the oven went wrong. So what happens? We bring out the binder of death, trying to flip through, we make a phone call to the contractor, we make a phone call here, and all of a sudden, half of our day is gone trying to deal with this as opposed to if I were to get into layer, find, okay, here's the cut sheet for the oven. Here's the person I need to call. We're seeing a great reduction in that communication that goes on after the actual build because they have all the information they need. So let you get back to work with another project as opposed to doing the handholding with the, with the handover as well. So it's just, there's a lot of benefits. And again, we really want to bridge the gap all the way from design, construction, through operations. We have that central source of truth. Let's give it to everyone in every, uh, in every design phase or in every building phase to make sure they can maximize it. And I said, I'm not here. Obviously, we're going to talk about layer today. I am not pushing layer. I am pushing the fact that you need to take a look at what other technology is out there, just so you can make sure that we all have this good solid base. So again, we can start to move the technology forward. I happen to believe layer is a great solution for this. And we'll dive into that here in a second. Audrey, any other questions before we kind of dive into the, uh, the meat and potatoes of this? No, I think uh, you're headed. Scott, do you have any questions for him off the top of your head? Uh, not really any questions per se yet, but just a comment that um, this is obviously the biggest thing with using all this new technology is construction is the last industry to truly be digitized. Um, there is a tendency to float in data and not really know how to use it. And there's lots of different tools like artificial intelligence and stuff that are coming off the grapevine to be able to solve that. But really um, just the core focus of everything we always talk about is how the technology has to work for people and we don't have to be working technology. And so I'm really excited to hear um, what Jeff has to share. Yeah, no, it's a great point. I said, 
I, one of our biggest successes is when we get to the front lines and they have that aha moment. Okay, this feature can save me this much time. This one can go ahead and save me this much money. And then we start to build on that success. But to your point, if we just hand another app over to the front lines or to our contractors, they're going to say, this is one more thing to manage. I'm not going to look at this. It doesn't do any good for anybody. So to your point, the technology is always as only as good as you want it to be. It's not a, I wish I had a magic technology that said, okay, I'm going to take all your data and make it great. Technology doesn't, doesn't exist like that. But as long as we have that solid base of data, then we can really make it an actual and actually work it into our day-to-day -day stuff. So it's, it's a great point, Scott. And like I said, the, we all know that there's a sunk cost within a platform for training as well. What Layer wants to do is really customize the Layer experience around the problem you're trying to solve. And again, get that light bulb moment to say, okay, here's how it's going to help not only myself, but as a firm over wide as well. So what we're looking at right now is just an overall project page for Layer. So these are just all the, so these are all the projects that are associated with me. There's always a couple different ways we can start a project. We're always going to have a couple demo projects down here just to start things, to give you some best practices, to give you some data collection techniques, just a really nice place to start. We can also go up here to create a project. We can create a template, and then we can actually start with a workflow-specific template as well. So many different things we can start. The double-edged sword with layer is that there's so many things you can do that someplace it's a little time, okay, where do I start? And so what we really want to do is again, give you that solid place and then customize it as we go. I talk to firms all day, every day, not one firm works the same. Project managers within those firms sometimes don't work the same. So what we want to do is really provide you a kit of parts for you to develop your customer, your uh, custom data center workflow to again, your specific needs. So I've actually put together uh, an ff &E demo just because it shows really well and I'll start to show kind of the interconnectivity of the data, the pictures, the cut sheets, everything else. Let me pull this up. Now what we're gonna be looking at now is just an overall project page to my ff &E project. Now the way layer is organized is by categories. So categories can be any kind of data that you want to collect and then organize. So those of you that are familiar with the program called Smartsheets, think of this as a Smartsheet with a direct integration into Revit. So the categories up here can be, think of all those uh, databases or an Excel spreadsheet or your spec sheets over here or your file folders over here. These categories are meant to collect all the information and again, bring it into one central source of truth. We can import things, whether it be Excel, uh, JSON, uh, CSV, whatever else to kind of get you started. Now, the most important thing here for my Revit users, and again, this is going to be the majority of you, what we now have the ability to do is take a raw Revit file and upload that directly within Layer. Now, it's important to note, I don't have to have a Revit seat. I don't have to have a Revit license. I don't even have to have much Revit knowledge to now actually look at the Revit information and make actionable steps. So a couple of different ways to do this. Number one, we're gonna walk through how we do it manually. For my Revit users, you're actually able to get in your Revit model and connect your project that way as well via our add -in. So once we actually hit continue, it's now going to give me all my Revit files that I have the opportunity to upload. I can also upload multiple models. Some of my clients that I'm working with, they're working with a structural, an MEP, an architectural. They can upload multiple models to one project and then slice and dice the information they want surfaced directly within Layer. So I've got one attached already. So a couple different things are going to happen as soon as we hit upload. First. These five categories are always gonna be highlighted or always gonna be synced up, typically because these are the ones that people wanna see most. Now, if I have other categories within my Revit file that I would then wanna surface, I can come down to my settings and this will actually give me a drop down list of every other category in my Revit file that I have the opportunity now to make a category over here in layer. So if I click on the roof category from my Revit file, it will then be a category right over here in my model that again, I can surface all the relevant uh, Revit data specific about the roof as well. So what happens now when we get things uploaded? So here's the meat of the situation. We have all the data now from all of our disparate databases and our Excel spreadsheets, everything else. 
we now have our Revit data all loaded into the layer. So now we are really speaking about one central source of truth for all your key stakeholders. Now, you have the ability to really make this as bespoke as possible or customizable as possible. So the way I have this set up might be completely different than the way you want this set up. I've got all my furniture specs listed out here and I wanna see what the name is, manufacturer type status, some pretty pictures, things like that. When I actually click into one of my elements, what's gonna happen here is gonna bring up my contextual data. So things like fields, files, notes, tasks, and activities. So the fields are meant to collect the information you care about specific to this lounge chair. And again, the way I have these fields set up might be completely different than the way you want these set up, but I always like to see some inspirational photos here. I've got a field set up for status, so I'm able to work with ownership or GC saying, okay, we've actually uh, ordered this chair, so that's now on order. I've got manufacturer unit cost, if there's a power requirement, I've got a field set up for files. So any kind of file type, whether it be a hand drawing, whether it be a DWG, a drawing set, we can now upload the files and associate that specifically to the element. The other wonderful thing about that Revit file upload is now instantaneously, I will be able to identify locations, marks, types, uh, distribution directly from my Revit file and associate that within layer. So with one click, I can see, okay, I've got 22 of these chairs in my model. I can see where they are, what the distribution of those rooms and the chairs as well. I've got a field set up here for notes. So think of project management, more of the collaboration as I'm going through and taking these notes, I can say, uh, you know, I can tag a team member, say I need to fix, and I can reference an element. So we're gonna do the armless lounge chair. And then as soon as I got mentioned, you can see I got a little in-app notification saying I've been mentioned within layer. As soon as I open that up, it brings me to exactly where I need to be. So it doesn't matter if it's the manufacturer down in Missouri or if it's a contractor out in California, as soon as that information is done all in real time. So the way we actually manipulate these is we're gonna edit the fields. We're gonna click the add field. And then this is gonna bring up those ground level tools that we can start to build out the fields on the right-hand side. The barcode reader is an important one for the modular world. This gives the ability to tag every item, every lumber, every piece that's coming out of the factory, put a QR or barcode on there. As it comes on site, the people have layer as well. They're able to do with their mobile app, click on that barcode, then pull up the information you need, whether it be location or a cut sheet or some kind of preventative maintenance. So we see that as a really nice way to tie the manufacturing all the way over to construction as well. Again, we have things like file fields. So any kind of file type, we've got formula fields, which will give you full Excel capability. I know people live and die within Excel. We want to bring you out of Excel and into layer with the same forms, the same functionality, the formulas now directly in here. So think of costing, thinking of budgeting can now all be done directly within the layer app. And then we've got things like a person or a phone number, and let's do a range input field here. So maybe I'm just looking for a, a general condition of what this chair is like. Maybe it's a legacy piece. So I'm going to hit save field there. And then when I come to the bottom, you're going to see now this field is automatically entered to my armless lounge chair. But if I come to a different element, you're going to see all these fields remain active, but now all the information is specific about my L desk versus the lounge chair. So again, it's a really nice way to identify your specific workflows and then build out these fields to not only collect the information you need, but give you the ability to digest the information the way you see fit as well. Okay, so I have a question for you because this Please. is like incredibly, incredibly amazing. Um, I, I'm like so digging it right now. So say that in, in my specific business, I have different categories for my factory partner. So there's like a budget category with all these selections. There is a builder grade category, a luxury category. Would I be able to classify and put them all in a spec folder? And then can, the, can I then choose everything for the client or with the client 
so that it would output everything that's going to go into that modular building? Exactly right. So that's the real nice thing with the collaboration, working with the owners. And what we would do, Audrey, is just set up different categories over here, because again, completely customizable. So if I want to put something for, you know, let's call it vendors, we can create that category. And now you're going to see that it comes down under vendors. Now I can start building out the workflows. So I can say, listen, let's get number vendor number one in here. And we're going to enter just a, let's say it was a person. So we're going to come down here and maybe it's a, a rep. Okay. And then they would be able to have access into that. Like even like a, a new developer or builder, they would have their own builder account and they would be able to access into layer for their, for their account, like on the, um, yeah. the outside. Okay. Yeah. And the cool thing is knowing that you're working with outside key stakeholders or outside consultants, what we give the ability to, to for the user to do is two ways to invite team members. So the first way will be to invite anyone from within the organization that has the opportunity to join a project. The next, and to your point, Audrey, is what we can do is the idea of the collaborator's license. What this will do is give you the ability to invite someone from outside the firm, give them different layers of permission so they don't screw up any of your data. When they hit accept, that becomes a free seat for your collaborator knowing that we want to lower the barrier of entry or eliminate the barrier of entry, making sure everyone has access to the project when they need it, where they need it, and the data they need. So it's a really nice way to not only manage the internal team, but all those key stakeholders you have from outside the firm as well. That's incredible. That's exactly how we want to do it. It's interesting. Um, we have a question from Amanda. Yeah. And and she said, um, from a vendor supplier aspect, is there a global cloud list for different products to be listed as available? Fantastic question. So another thing on our roadmap is a, what we're calling the layer verse at this point. And marketing doesn't like it, but I like it. So what we're going to do is now reaching out to uh, different vendors and different uh, manufacturers. We'll be asking them for Revit families. We'll be asking them from inventory, things like that. So again, now we can actually come here, more of a one-stop shop, start to view some of the vendors, maybe get Revit families associated so we can start to load it in the project as well. So we were actually at Neocon a couple of weeks ago, and that was a, a very very question how do the manufacturers how do the reps start to get involved with this now we have the opportunity to start tying multiple entities in so again one central source of truth so it's a great question and something we're working towards right now that's incredible because actually having that insurer would be um, a great resource especially um, amanda's in the ripping industry and so having that and being able to have you know there's how many different type of ripping supply you know you got you got trusses, you've got the material on the outside, you got shingles, you got metal. I mean, you've got a, a slew, then you've got colors, then you've, got, I mean, it, it's an endless feature of um, collection. And then having those conversations when you're in the design format of it and knowing that you can pull these pieces together and actually I think the best tool about what you have here is the images because everybody can identify things as an image, right? Yeah. Um, it, it truly will help. And so I'm, I'm so glad, Amanda, keep asking the questions because we do value your, your insight. This is great. Sorry to interrupt, Jeff. I'm just I, I, like the wheels are turning. I really love this. No, it's a, and that's the whole thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump into something new real quick before I jump in. Well, let me jump into the file. So again, just really quickly, I actually have uh, clients out West that are using drones for survey purposes. They'll come back to the office, actually upload that footage directly within layer. And again, speaks to that central source. But back to my capital example, we had, I think it was 40,000 pictures we had to take on site, come back to the office and then have to sift and sort where those pictures went. The wonderful thing with Layer is I can actually, we're a mobile app, so we're available on iOS, Android, doesn't matter what kind of platform you have, we work on that. The app looks exactly as it does on desktop. But the nice thing is, think of punch list or think of a site inspection where I'm doing all the documentation, I'm doing all the pictures. Well, right now I'm dialed in to the armless lounge chair on my app. I'm gonna click on add a file. It's gonna automatically bring up my camera for me. When I take that picture and I click on use photo, you're going to see now that photo is automatically tagged to exactly where it needs to be. So you're not coming back, oh, is this site inspection number two west wall or site inspection number 17 east wall? As soon as that picture is taken within the app, it then automatically get categorized to exactly where it needs to be. You can also go a step further. You can actually pull the document up 
And now we have a full suite of markup tools where we can actually start making the annotations. We can take notes up here, have a full log over here. And again, all done in real time. You can have someone in the, in the manufacturer, you can have someone on site, snap that picture. Audrey can be back in the office, see that picture come through in real time, all the annotations, again, without all the text messages going back and forth. So we'd see this as a really powerful tool, not just for the beginning of the design, but then all the way through making sure we make the mobile collection or collection as easy as possible. Yeah, I think that's really the key, honestly. I think being able to have this quick integration and then being able to not have to wait to go back to your office, wait to write up the text, write to get the information over. It's incredibly seamless. This is incredibly valuable. Yeah, I say just with, with everyone spread all over the place and the massive amounts of data you all have to manage, it's mind boggling, it's absolutely nuts. So whatever we can do to make it easy. And to your point, Audrey, if we're on site, what we can now do is start taking notes specific to this armchair, right? So as I'm going through and typing these notes, it's gonna be now automatically tagged, again, specific to that uh, item. I actually talked to a client a couple of days ago. She said she uses notes. A lot of times she understands what the decision was, but she doesn't know what the why was. And so with the note, she's able to come through, comb through that conversation and understand why that decision was made. And then the same with the tasks. Obviously, again, we wanna keep everything centralized from a project management standpoint. Once I start telling people what to do, I can assign team members, I can assign due dates, I can assign a, uh, uh, an element directly within Revit or directly within Layer, how to get that as well. When they get notified, they'll get the in-app notification. And then the same thing with activity. This will just give you a running total of exactly who did what when, specific to this lounge chair and project over wide. Again, just a really nice way to get very granular into who's doing what when. That leads me into the visualization. Gone are the days of the PDFs. Yes, we still have to use those AutoCAD drawings, everything else. Our clients are now expecting more of a visual experience as we're going through the project. So what we've done is now did, oops, excuse me real quick, let me go down here. What we now did is through our Forge integration, we now actually give you a full 3D representation of the project directly within the app. And it doesn't matter if I'm desktop here or if I'm out in the field with an iPad, a Microsoft Surface, whatever it happens to be, now I've got access to the 360 directly in here. And so there's a couple different things we can do. Number one, we can actually do a first person walkthrough. So we can take the client, actually walk them through the project in real time, see the space planning, click on different elements as they come through. The Wi-Fi is a little slow today, my apologies. Uh, yep, so as this comes through, we're actually dialed down to the element level. So as we're doing through, we can actually say, okay, if we have a question on this table or on this side chair, we can actually click on the element, come back to it, and then have everything in real time. So while this loads, let me get into one more thing here. I know that some of the bane of our existence as, as designers, as construction, as operations, is trying to aggregate all this great data for any kind of reporting. I talk with clients all day, every day that spend hours trying to get all this information and then trying to be an InDesign for a room data sheet or a spec sheet and spending way too much time doing that. So what we now give you the ability to do is through our different views, we're gonna create what we call our document view. We also have, again, many customizable ways to see the data. A gallery view is gonna be all the same data you see behind, but it's gonna be on individual cards. So the armless chair would be one card, all the data. The coffee table, one card, all the data. The table is what we're looking at right now, just the more of the Excel format with the rows and columns. The drawing view we'll talk about here in a second, I'm able to upload a PDF directly within layer, whether it be a drawing set, and then use that for punch list, things like that. What we're gonna talk about right now is our document view. What this now gives us the ability to do is start to harvest all this information and then output it in a drop and drag format. So what's gonna happen here, we're always gonna start you off with some templates. So just some best practices. So whether it be a field observation, meeting minutes with the client, a room data sheet, a presentation for the client as well, we have templates to really aggregate the information and get you started. Now, the nice thing is once you have your, uh, your uh, template specified or set, 
you can then save it to a firm-wide library and then simply redeploy the report or the template as similar projects come along. So again, this speaks of centralizing location, centralizing the processes, really hammering those processes out so it's just a one click and it's done. So we're gonna start from scratch and this is gonna give us a blank document where we can start to fill in the information. With these series of containers, I can now stop to drop on the, on the canvas and start to fill in all these different fields that we've created for the elements. Now I have the opportunity to simply drop these on the document. So we're gonna start with a one big container here. And I will put some static text in here. And this is customizable, customizable to the nth degree. Any logos, fonts, widths, heights, whatever you want in here, we can make it look. We'll do that. And then let's bring a three column container over. And right now, if you look, I'm under, the, I'm under the lens of my training table under my furniture category. So it knows to pull the information specific about the training table. So I'm gonna go through and I wanna see what that element name is in my first column. And let's say we'll bold that and we'll underline it and we'll change the font. Next, I wanna see uh, what the status is of the training table. And I can see it's proposed. And then lastly, I wanna see whatever pretty pictures I have associated with this. So I'm gonna drop this in here. And again, it'll start to drop the images right here. So you're not going through element by element. As soon as we start clicking through, you're gonna see now all the information is specific to the element that I'm clicking through. So eventually we can get to a place where this is our room data sheet template, where you can get your specified fields. And again, as I'm clicking through, all the information is taken care of. Now, if I want to make this a living, breathing document, what I can do is click on the little open element. This will go, give me all the information specific about this chair. And if I come down to my notes section here, right there, you're gonna see my document now automatically updates as well. So it's a living, breathing document. As long as all these fields are correct within layer, that report is already done. So whether it be a product presentation, whether it be a spec sheet or a room data sheet, all of these are already done. Everything's already updated with the click of the button. You're able to publish this, get a shareable link for either someone in, inside the company or an outside consultant. They can get in there, do the manipulations, do the markups, again, all in real time, all in one central source of truth. And Audrey, to your point earlier, I have a lot of clients that are actually using these room data sheets. I'll go down to my another example here. Uh, what we can do is actually take some of these room data sheets and during our client meeting, just go through room by room. Say, okay, here's a conference table. Here's what the status is. I've got my pretty pictures. I've got my unit costs, my notes. So as I'm going through with ownership, as I'm going through these different people, to Audrey's point, as opposed to coming back and having to translate everything, I can do it directly within layer and get all those real-time answers I need right then. So a lot of different things we can do with the reporting. This is brand new for us, something we're very excited about. Does anyone see any applications in the modular world? Does this come into play with any of the kind of day-to-day -day stuff? Oh my gosh. Um... This is incredibly useful. I'm just thinking, how long does it take to put all this data in there? And do you have like a staff to help you with customer service? Because this is an incredible tool, but I obviously we have to set up all of these different categories and all this different information. So how does it work on the customer service side? Yeah, that's a great question. Number one, the AEC industry is not known for the customer service. You can call the company and they might get back to you in a couple of weeks. From my experience, every other company that I've, I've, uh, I've created, the customer service is always front and center. We have to have that. Your success is our success. So there's never a charge for onboarding. There's never a charge for our customer success. What we typically do is start with a 30-day trial. Before we start that trial, we'll get together with your key stakeholders, get our customer success team on the line as well, customize all the fields, get the data loaded, whether it be through a, a CSV import or a Revit file import. We'll We'll get everything customized for you, let you loose for 30 days, obviously with our continued support. But then when we crush this thing at the end of 30 days, we talk about paying or paid seats. And if not, you tell me to pound sand that I go somewhere else. <laughs> yes, sir. 
<laughs> awesome. Well, I think um, this is incredibly useful. I Good. can see so many different translations in so many different areas. I um, and like I said, when we met even a year ago, I, I really saw a great capacity for what you're creating. So yeah, if there's something else, we have about 15 more minutes. We'd love to see if there's anything else that you want to show us on the offside part. Yeah. Yep. So just really quickly back to the visualization. Here is now my 3D model. Again, just with that Revit file upload, that's all I have to do. Now I get full visibility into my entire project. Now there's a couple of different things we can actually do. Since we're under my Revit category of furniture, I can say, listen, just gray out everything except for my furniture. So now I have the opportunity to actually click on a piece and now I've got some fields designed where I actually have a 3D image of whatever that element is. I've got what version of my Revit file, again, type, location, any notes, whatever it happens to be. Or I can say, listen, just cluster the elements that I'm talking about. So now I can pull together all fixtures or all walls or all windows or doors in a very succinct manner. I can get that visual representation quantities counts and again one click is now going to surface all my pertinent information not just from layer but from my Revit file as well and then the other feature real quick is just the idea of the first person walkthrough so when we're doing space planning when we're actually having those first couple meetings with the client we already have the design set right we already have its model one two or three what we can now do is say listen let's go ahead and take a walk through here as we go through we're actually able to get down, walk through the space. So we're doing some space, oops, I'm in the stairs right now. So we can see what the room looks like. If I have a question on this chair, again, I can do a simple click and all the information. So imagine the power of walking through this all with the key stakeholders going through room by room, filling in the details right here and being done. And again, a really nice visual representation not to be ageist, but some of the younger generation that are coming up, they want to have this functionality. They want to have this visualization. Enscape is becoming more and more popular because it's a great project and a great program. People are very visual creatures. So we want to make sure we give them the information, again, the way they want to digest that as well. Incredible. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I think that is absolutely huge. That's a question I was going to ask in the beginning is if you guys were planning a um, integration with any company like Enscape, but it looks like you've gone ahead and done that yourself and even gone yeah. the extra step of allowing you to sort of zoom in on each actual, um, you know, BIM model of, of the pieces of furniture and that like that view in the right, the model view that that is huge. Yeah. So, and this is something we're really excited about. Like I said it was one of those things. It's, it's one thing again, back to the earlier point to have all the data in one place, but if you can't do anything with it, who cares? Or if you can't digest it the way you want, or you can't make an actionable, who cares? And so again, I think layer brings that kit of parts to really give you the information you need when you want it and make it more cohesive for all the other key stakeholders and make it fun to be involved, provide transparency through the process. And so there's a lot of different things that lends itself to really make Making the process enjoyable, not just for the owner, but for everyone involved as well. Oh, then, amazing. Amazing. Right on. Right on. <laughs> and then there is a couple other housekeeping things here as far as if we come down, you're going to have a, obviously a running total of all your files, notes, tasks, and activities. For my Revit users, you can actually get into Revit model. We are a simple plugin. Move all the stuff here. We're a simple plugin for Revit, so we can show you how to download that. Now, the nice thing is it is a bi-directional push. So I can come here and I can say, listen, publish a model and I can connect the model just like I did in layer, but without the manual upload. One nice thing is, is as I'm marking around my Revit file, you're gonna see now my, my layer dashboard over here automatically goes to exactly where I am my Revit model. So as soon as I click on cafeteria 121, now my layer dashboard becomes accessible with all this other ancillary uh, information that I would typically have to dig through all these file folders for. Now it's instantaneously available within my Revit model. And then there's different things we can sync parameters. So you actually have the ability within layer to sync parameters back to a Revit file with automation. Then your Revit user can come in and say, okay, what parameters were actually synced within layer? Then I have the opportunity to pick and choose what things I want to sync over and what I don't. I know people get very protective of their model and I never want to screw with that. So you always have very granular control over who can sync and what gets synced back into your model. 
And then the last thing with that is the nice thing about this, it'll never slow down your model because everything is layered cloud computing over your Revit data. So even 40,000 pictures will never bog down that model as well. And then I said, that's the, that's the most important thing. Kind of the number one is that central source of truth. Number two is connecting that Revit data to your non-Revit users to make it actionable data. And then the number three is making sure it's completely customizable, fits into your specific workflow, the problem you're trying to solve. And we really feel that we have the, the upper hand here to really try to customize, again, specifically about what you're trying to do. So we are always looking for new partners. We are always looking for people who will help us push us, become a better organization. We have a long roadmap ahead of us, but again, we're really looking for those true partners to come together and say, man, wouldn't this be a great idea? Man, wouldn't this be cool? And really develop that to not only serve the marketplace, but back to our, our earlier conversation, make it a better marketplace and do it together. You are speaking my language. I love it. <laughs> I get excited. I love it. I love the, I know. And I think it's so great because I can see your passion, you know, go through this. And I think it's probably very excited. Like, you know, we've talked about this before, Jeff, is that you're like the serial entrepreneur and now you've really landed in a space that is so valuable for so many unique users. It's true. It's true. And I say it's just, this is an industry, uh, back to Scott's uh, conversation earlier about, you know, it's ripe for disruption. It is one of the last industries that has truly embraced anything digital. And it makes no sense because we're in the industry that has probably some of the most uh, data to manage. And so again, at a certain point, I'm not saying it has to be a layer, but I would strongly encourage you to go out there, take some time, do your research. Instead of being reactive all the time, we need to be more proactive, not only in our personal life, but our professional life as well and i see technology as being part of that yeah and jeff your ability to kind of zoom in on everything in the project is especially powerful i think for modular when we're trying to put as much things in the factory as we can and trying to streamline you know all those different furnitures that you can zoom in on and have all that data at your fingertips when you're trying to do as much of this in the factory as you possibly can and specify that in a way that's off-site i think this is especially powerful and i haven't really seen anything quite like this on the market oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's just exciting. So again, back to, you know, all the design stuff is so preloaded. So as much as we can do in the factory, as much as that solid base we can lay before item number one goes out, then it's a win for everyone. I, I have to agree too. And I think the other thing, like Scott was saying, you know, most of the factories that I have worked with, everybody works off of PDFs. Everybody works off of an Excel the binder or of a death. document. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah, there's exactly Scott. Love that name. The binder yeah. of death. <laughs> yep, me too. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you for being here. Thank you for this amazing um, presentation. Um, I'm glad that we were able to actually walk through and have this integration where we can actually see it interactively. Sure. And um, is there a way that people can reach you? Yeah, now what I can do is I will put a, I can put an email together and Audrey, it's okay if I can just send it to you. It'll put my, my contact information in there. I'll put some layer links in there as well. I can also put a link in there for the 30 day trial for anyone who would like to kick the tires. And again, if you'd like to do that, I'll put a link in there for an onboarding session to again, give you all of our time, attention and love, making sure that your success is our success and we'll crush this project for you. I love it. You make me so happy. Well, thank you. Thank you for being on the offsite dirt offsite construction series. It has been a complete pleasure for us to be able to be here with you. Um, you can find the rest of our um, different dialogue events conversations on offsitedirt.com. Modular Sure Site is my company. We are one of the leading and supporting um, contributors of, of this platform. And we are certainly excited to be able to share this offer with all of our guests and individuals. We'll make sure that we get that out there for you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Well, most importantly, thank you to Offside Dirt. Thank you to Audrey. This has been a lot of fun to my AOC crew. Thank you for joining us too. Always a pleasure seeing you boys and uh, looking forward to continue the conversation. Thank you, Scott. Scott, how are you doing over there? Ready to sign off here? He is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. I hope you have a glorious rest of your week. Happy Halloween for October. And we look forward to our next event at the end of October. Every last Tuesday of the month, you can check us out for our offsite construction series. You can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and of course, offsitedirt.com. Thank you.
Thank you, Audrey. Thank you, Jeff. See ya.